Welcome to the Giants Huddle Podcast brought to you by Citizen, the official bank of the New York football Giants. Welcome to this edition of the Rapid Reaction Podcast. Madeline Burke and Howard Cross here after the Giants' second preseason game, a win over the visiting Carolina Panthers with a final score of 21-19. But Howard, the big storyline, of course, is we got to see the starters in action for the first time this preseason. Yeah, you got to see the stars in action. They did a good job, especially on offense. They did a great job uh, moving the ball down the field. A lot of completions. You got to see Waller. You got to see Paris. Even Hodges got in some of the action. Um, Danny looked great, very crisp. I think it was like 8 or 9 or 9 or 10 or something like that. So you, you like that. And getting the ball into the, to the end zone with, with Bellinger, the forgotten tight end, <laughs> does good. Defense also looked good, but they kept giving the – uh, offense of the Panthers opportunities with small, you know, hiccups. They had um, a couple of false, not, not false, uh, you know, for illegal procedures, lining up in the neutral zone, and another penalty that, that, that allowed the Panthers to move down the field. Without that, the Panthers wouldn't have got a sniff on the on the first team D. Uh, then after that, you know, you know, coach was a little, a little razzled because he had to call a timeout. But if they had 12 men on the field. He didn't like the operations. He says, when you're calling timeouts and stuff, you're wasting plays that you're going to need in real game situations. And before we get into the penalties, though, got to talk about that opening drive, right? I mean, the first touchdown, it's 10 plays, 75 yards, ended, as you mentioned, Daniel Jones thrown to Daniel Bellinger. First two touchdowns of the preseason came from a quarterback to a tight end of the same name. Of course, we saw Tommy DeVito to Tommy Sweeney in game one, Daniel Jones to Daniel Bellinger in game two. There's only so long that that can trend, that trend can go on. But the way that that drive went, you know, the way that they executed down the field, and there wasn't a single run play in that drive as well. What that tell you about the 2023 Giants offense? Well, you know, when they picked up all these guys, they picked up speed, they picked up a lot of guys, and people say they picked up a lot of similar guys. But what you can see is that now you got guys that are a lot of speed on the outside. Demons have to respect the speed. They got to back up, and they back up. You're leaving Waller in the middle. You're leaving Bellinger in the middle. They catch the ball the back and catch the ball out of the backfield with a lot of space. If you kind of creep up on those guys, and one of those guys on the outside are going to just blow by you. So coaches kind of you know, got the personnel, and, and Joe Shane's got the personnel in here that can actually have wide open receivers running when they're running plays. That is important because it makes a quarterback. Daniel looked excellent. Daniel looked like a, you know, Hall of Fame guy right there because nobody was even anywhere near him the whole time. And that opening drive, of course, uh, we saw a little bit of penalty going on. Andrew Thomas got a flag. The following uh, drive on defense, Dexter Lawrence got a flag. Both times the Giants were able to overcome the penalties, but penalties had been a little bit of an issue and one of the things Brian Dable had wanted to emphasize saying hey I want to have some clean games how does this team kind of clean up those those moments going forward I think the, the first two penalties is alignment penalties and I think these guys were just excited to, to to be in the game so they kind of got you know weren't you know Dexter jumped a little bit I uh, think Jihad was lined up in the neutral zone I think you know once they get to play and play on a regular basis they're going to look down the line and ask the ref uh, and the refs are you know, they're learning a little bit, too. They're learning on the fly. They're getting some reps in because I think they call a, you know, illegal procedure. I mean, not illegal procedure. Line up in the zone on one of the DBs. And the DB had just asked him, am I okay? And the ref said yes. Then he throws the flag. Like, but you said yes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of those things you're just not hearing all the communication. I think that part would be good. The penalties outside of that, you know, the, the offensive line, the, the, the second and third guys, all the holding, their feet in the night, their feet in the hands, not in the right place. That could be worrisome, but, you know, you, you got to hope for our health with your, with your starters. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a great showing from a lot of these rookies, too. we got to start with the offense, right? Offensively, we saw Jalen Hyatt get his first touchdown. Uh, this came, you know, one play after he had a, a drop that he would very much like back, and luckily Tyrod Taylor went right back to him the next play. Uh, beautiful touchdown pass and really ex, uh, exhibiting his speed on that play. Eric Gray, the running back, also got into the end zone on a nine-yard run. Um, when you look at these offensive guys getting to the, the Eric Gray touchdown came uh, as a result of a big play by a defensive rookie, Jordan Riley, who got that stuff on fourth and one in the middle of the field, uh, put the Giants in good field position. I mean, looking at the, the performance of these rookies overall so far and what we've seen in the preseason, what stands out? I think what stands out to me is uh, John Michael Smith's, uh, how well he's playing the first game, 21 snaps and, and pass protection, no pressures. I don't know how many snaps of, of, of pass protection this game. 
He may have given up one pressure, no sack. Uh, that stands out. Um, highest true speed when the DB looked up, when Hyatt looked up, he looked down and Hyatt wasn't there. Like he, he just flat out couldn't keep up with him. Um, uh, I think uh, Banks and Hawkins on the corners, they look, they're looking incredible. They look like veterans standing out there. And we're waiting to see some better receivers, hopefully next week against the Jets, and how these guys fare against them with a better, with better quarterback play. Um, and the running back, he's gotten a lot of plays, you know, uh, returning the ball, but now he's starting to run the ball as well. So, and there are other guys that are, that are contributing as well. You got Beavers who's coming back from knee injury. He was basically a rookie himself because he missed his rookie campaign through a knee injury. He looks great. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how all these guys fit in. But the young guys are really contributing. You can tell that the uh, they went from a year ago of trying to fill the team to this year having a lot of competition all over the, over the field. Another guy, too, another second-year guy, Kayvon Thibodeau, right? Earlier this week, we heard defensive coordinator Wink Martindale kind of being candid, saying he had to ask Kayvon to step up, wanted a little bit more, and Kayvon was welcoming to that and saying, yeah, you know what, I agree. There's a lot I want to focus on in year two. Um, he had a great sack, but not only was it the sack that was something that stood out, but also just the way he powered through Iki Aquanu as well. Um, what, do you, what did you see there? I think Iki Aquanu didn't even get out of his stance. He got by him so quick. I think that's what he's going to have to work on. I think Thibodeau's going to have to work on, focus on like one, one or two things that he does well perfect them, make them almost unbeatable, and then he can start adding to the repertoire. I think when you're that good, sometimes you get you get so enamored with, you know, adding more things because you don't want to be stale when people put you on tape. But you can do that. You can be really good at something, like so, so good at something that, you know, everybody's worried about. And if you do one thing that's not that, then they fall down almost because they're, they're afraid of what you're going to do. Now, on the offensive line, the, the guard rotation still continued to be a, a pretty prominent one right now. We're seeing a lot of players rotating through there as as the Giants kind of shore up who's going to play where in the offensive line. Um, did anybody stand out to you for the Giants offensive line? I mean, I, the center did well. Yeah. I thought that um, both tackles played really, really well. And I was very happy with their play. Now, the guard play it was kind of hard when you're watching really the centers and the, and the two tackles to pay strict attention to the guards because they keep rotating. By the time you start to figure out who's in there, there's the next series and somebody else. But but the way they were saying it and the way that, the, that, that I'm just coming back to us is that it's not that the guard play isn't is, is so bad or anything. It's more of that no one's really st- stood up and took the reins and said, okay, I want, this is going to be my spot. I'm, I'm ready. And they're still waiting for it. They're waiting for somebody to really, you know, jump out and take the lead in, in the right and left guard. Now, this is, of course, the second preseason game. There's one more next week when the Giants and the Jets face each other right back here at MetLife Stadium. Um, you know, unclear who and what is going to be uh, on the field in, in that game, how much run, if any, some of the starters or um, or players will have. But when you look at where this team is right now, what do you think that the thing that stands out to you most about the identity of this 2023 Giants team is that as they're coming together in this preseason? Well, it was only one like game with the starters playing, but it looked like it's going to be a, a game of offensively where they're going to be throwing the ball to a lot of open receivers. It looks like there's going to be a lot of quick hits. You didn't see Saquon Barkley there, so you don't know what he's going to add to the mix. It looks like from a defensive standpoint, there's going to be a lot of pressure up the middle with Dexter Lawrence and, and, and Big Low. In, in the middle, and if Thibodeau and, and Ojolari can come off the outside, if they can find two other guys to come off the outside as well, it's going to be great. Okereke looks amazing in the middle. He's sideline to sideline. He's playing a pass. He's playing a run. He's meeting guys in the hole. He's making tackles in the backfield. And that's not blitzing. That's just him being able to, to read and pick up on it. The corner play is great. Uh, I think both safeties look solid right now. So they look solid all around. But again, they're playing the NFC South, so I don't want to like read too much into it to get too high on it. But for what what you saw, you know, you would grade them out. The starters are pretty much like an, you know, an A minus right. with a couple of penalties here and there to set them back, but an A minus for sure. Right, because the final score of 21-19 isn't fully reflective. You know, the starters they go, they went into the half uh, mm-hmm. with a score of what 21 to three was. Twenty one to three hit the half. Yeah, so that is a bit more reflective of the way that this team, especially the the ones and twos, were looking in your opinion, right? Yeah, they they, they looked really well against against this team. And I think that you got a rookie quarterback. You got you got a lot of pieces you're trying to fit together. You're trying to find the right guys. I I thought that you know they kind of 
you know, got their feet up under them a little bit, but still we started pulling guys out by that time. Yeah, still quite a bit to, to go back to the film room on, to learn from and to build on in the final couple of weeks uh, before the regular season, before Sunday night football against the Dallas Cowboys. I think it's a little more than that. I think this is a really tough week for the Giants and for all the teams in the NFL. You got 90 guys now. You got they got to all be fighting for reps this last week, trying to figure out how they're going to get on the field, uh, how how if possible, hoping that the, that the starters don't play so they get some reps in the actual live games, uh, begging for reps in practice. This is a this is a hard part of the season for for everybody. So it's going to be really interesting when it goes on. And I'd imagine Thomas McGay, he's going to be getting a lot of edible arrangements and maybe, you know, gift baskets and uh, what have you. Because special teams, of course, is the, the bubble decider for the roster. Well, it is. And like I said, I, the thing I can say for, for our team, if you watch other teams, when they, especially in kickoff, they run to the end zone. Every player does. Our guys, I don't know what's going on. It's like I look at them, I'm thinking like, they know this is how they're going to make the team. So, you know, if they watch tape of the other guys getting down there and they're not, that's something bad to put on tape. We'll see how it pans out. Of course, one more preseason game next week, right back here at MetLife Stadium when the Giants host the Jets. But that's a wrap for the Rapid Reaction podcast with Howard Cross. I'm Madeline Burke. Final score today from MetLife Stadium, Giants 21, Panthers 19. The huddle is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York Giants. From game day to every day, Citizens is made ready for Giants fans with insights, guide, guidance, and solutions, learn more at citizensbank.com. And Giants fans love a winner. It's why they love Citizens, named a 2022 Best Bank in the U.S. by the banker. As the official bank of the Giants and sponsor of the huddle, Citizens is made ready for fans of Big Blue. Learn more at citizensbank.com.